Hi, my name is Shilpa Kancharla, and I'm an engineer on the TensorFlow team. Today, we're going to learn how to pre-process and load video data into a TensorFlow model. You'll be able to use the skills you learn here to develop video classification models like this one. This model uses the UCF 101 dataset and predicts the action the person is taking. For example, on the left, you'd classify this video as band marching, and on the right, you'd classify it as apply eye makeup. I'll outline the data set you'll use, how to create frames from videos, how to visualize those frames, and how to configure the data set for performance. You can find complete details on all these steps in the associated tutorial. Here, I'll cover the key idea for you. Okay, let's get started. Today, we'll be using the UCF 101 Action Recognition Dataset. This dataset contains 101 different actions from diverse categories. Each category has about 25 examples of that action, which are split into four to seven videos for each example. To keep things simple for this tutorial, we'll be using the first 10 classes listed here to keep the dataset size small, so our model can be trained quickly. Let's take a look at the shape of the video data that we're going to pass into the model as well. Loading video data into a deep learning model is similar to how you would load an image data, but with an extra dimension. In a later video, I'll explain how to set up a 3D CNN classifier, which accepts data of the following shape. Batch size times the number of frames times height by width by channels. The number of frames dimension can also be synonymous with time. Videos can be split up into a series of frames, which are essentially images. We use the OpenCV library to help us with this task. When we call this function, we specify the number of frames we want, the output size of the frame we want to produce, and the number of steps between each frame. These are user-defined parameters that are heavily dependent on the data set. If the video isn't long enough for us to collect frames from, we start collecting them from the beginning. Otherwise, we can pick a random time in the video to start getting frames from. We apply a couple of transformations using TensorFlow functions to get our frames to be the size we specified. Finally, we return a NumPy array of these frames. Use the toGIF function to create a visualization of some of the frames you've generated. Call the frames from video file function first, take the output of that and place it into the toGIF function. The frame generator class uses a generator function that will yield the frame array and an encoded label associated with that set of frames. Use this class to create a TensorFlow data input pipeline. It allows you to feed in data into your model. Consider using buffered prefetching so you can yield data from the disk without having an input-output bottleneck. Prefetching allows you to grab the data a step ahead of when it's inputted into the model, therefore reducing the amount of time between consuming a data point and producing another. Caching allows you to store data in memory or local storage, therefore saving some operations like file opening from being performed every epoch. Overall, these additional preprocessing steps allow for work on the CPU and GPU to run in parallel, so your processor can prepare data while your GPU is classifying. EfficientNet is a convolutional neural network architecture method that uniformly scales all dimensions of your input data. We can treat it as the hello world example of using video data for now. Let's try putting our training data set into a pre-trained EfficientNet model, which trains our data to a high accuracy in just a few minutes. You can also take a look at an additional model of video classification I wrote in the description. You can try applying what you've learned in this video and tutorial to other kinds of video data. See if you can use the generator class we've created here in your own machine learning pipelines for video. Moreover, video data has an extra time dimension unlike image data. Volumetric data, such as MRI scans, also have an extra dimension of volume unlike image data as well. So you could attempt to use the code shown here for volumetric data. If possible, I'd like to invite you to share links of your open source projects down in the comments as well. Thanks very much for watching.